While I'm crazy excited for its release, I'm a little worried about the public's reaction to Eternites, an upcoming anime-styled action RPG mostly well-known and talked about for its similarities to the Persona and Shin Megami Tensei game series. At first glance, the game appears to be an excellent, dark action RPG with a bit of dating mechanics for some added pizzazz. We've seen the Persona inspiration from the trailers, promo media, and the demo, which has caused a lot of hype for an indie game. Online chatter seems to be really positive and widespread, and with the revelation of there being a gay romance option, even some of the LGBT community has built excitement around the game's release. It's a cold take to say that this game is hyped for quite a lot of people. But will this game having a large audience be a good thing? The main reason why I'm worried is because I'm not sure if the expectations of the community are in line with what we most likely will be receiving as an end product. I suppose this all sounds really dramatic, and I'm not exactly going for that, but as I was playing the demo and thinking about things I saw online, a few things came to mind as concerns. As I stated before, there's a dating mechanic people are most commonly referring to as very Persona-like. I know we haven't seen a ton of the system built out, but based on the majority of the writing, we have seen, I don't know if that perspective is entirely a good expectation to carry because unlike Persona, this game really tends to lean towards the perverted. If you've played Persona before, you know the social link system involves you meeting, hanging out with, and dating other characters in the game, which becomes rather necessary as building rapport with friends adds various bonuses and boosts to the fighting aspects of the game. I don't necessarily think this part isn't true about Eternites, but again, the writing isn't exactly like what we've seen in Persona. Online gaming outlets have been making some comments lately that I've seen that kind of reinforce that thinking. Some who have played the game have made comments that there's things in the game that are concerning to them, implied being from a sexual standpoint. We've seen how a lot of the more vocal online groups have spoken up about their thoughts on how sexuality has been portrayed in video games lately, with advocates on both sides arguing their thoughts about what is appropriate in gaming and what isn't. Persona has generally been really well received by many, and I think that a big part of it is how oftentimes the newer, more popular entries handle elements of sexuality with kids' gloves despite the core audience believing everything to be so deep. Persona 5's first dungeon is a great example of that as the entirety of that situation is tied to physical and sexual abuse of minors by an adult in a position of power. However, nothing that we see really dives incredibly deep into the subject. This isn't a critique of them not doing that, Storytelling can be very powerful by using surface level concepts only and letting viewers fill in the gaps of the detail, which Persona chooses to do to tell their story. It's not so oblivious that you don't understand what's going on, but the game also never hangs on to the darkest moments for too long. It also implies a lot more of the physical aspect of the relationships than it directly addresses them head on. Persona 4 has a good example of this, where when you finish an established relationship with a partner, you end up with a scene of them spending the night with you. The player obviously assumes that sex occurred due to the particulars of how it's implied to occur, but it's never more than an implication. A heavy implication, sure, but nothing about this is clear and direct. You also see some of the characters in revealing clothing, but it's generally done so with reason, like a costume or a bathing suit at a beach as opposed to Ichi content, where you see characters in more compromised situations like bathrooms, changing clothes, or other voyeuristic situations. There's a damn good reason for all of this in game design. Atlas wants their games to appeal to as many people as possible, offend as little people as possible, and to avoid too heavy of controversies in order to maximize the profits of their games. Even then, there's still several, mostly younger, less experienced of the audience, that has made many controversies over some aspects of these games. I'm sure many of you have feelings about all this, but the point I'm trying to make is that from what I've seen and what some outlets have reported, I don't think Eater Knights is going to handle these situations as gently. In fact, I'd go as far to say that I think Eater Knights will handle many sexual elements in this game much more like what we see with niche Ichi games. If you follow the page, you know I play a fair share of games that have highly suspect content in them, like Seven Pirates H or recently the remaster of Akiba's Trip. 
These games often make it a point to show off their naughty side, but usually under the guise of being a joke or in some lighthearted way. As far as the Japanese audience goes, it's mostly acceptable, but a very vocal group of English-speaking audiences have a known propensity for getting upset about many, many things in games. I'm full of examples today, but just yesterday I was browsing Reddit and I came across a post talking about Final Fantasy IX's main character Zidane, specifically his inappropriate advances towards the main female protagonist, Princess Garnet. At one point, they are both climbing a rope ladder to an airship, Garnet ahead of Zidane, and during the scene, he touches her butt and says something like, ooh, soft. For the rest of the ride, Garnet is understandably mad at Zidane, refusing to talk to him. I played this game for the first time at something like age 13 or 14, and I remember Zidane being a goofy and at times thick-headed individual. He also comes off as a, quite a womanizer, however it's addressed lightly as kind of a stupid man trope. At the time, I never gave it a second thought. He's an idiot who has a lot to learn about treating other people and is showing his feelings in silly ways. People are looking back at this kind of event now though like it's a hard case of sexual assault and commenters had some commentary about their belief that most fans of the series look back on this behavior in a very poor way hoping that in the event of a remaster, these kind of events are completely removed with no references of them. To me, he is a fantasy character and an idiot. I had no desire to emulate him or his behaviors, and I still don't see any cause for concern to this day. I'm not advocating for morally wrong or illegal acts to be common and prevalent in media, especially really egregious acts, but I am saying there are games with some morally questionable stuff in it, and I personally think that it's totally fine, despite the arguments from vocal groups that say otherwise. I know what's right and wrong, and in reality, I can laugh at things portrayed in fantasy that isn't good or right in real life. I think there's a problem if someone can't do that and they should look into working on themselves in that area if they can't make that distinction. That FF9 experience just shows an example of people wanting to advocate for the removal of any immoral elements from games now. It's one example of many out there. To be blunt, this is what I'm trying to get at here and it's that I think that Eternites is going to be horny. Most horny games live in a little closeted world without a lot of press or talk outside of really specific circles. Since this game is already being talked about in a lot of larger gaming circles, was shown off to a massive audience with the PlayStation Showcase, and is being discussed and written about in major gaming outlets, I predict that the press will push the clickbait regarding the perviness of this game, and with that, content creators, online posters, and the usual Twitter crowd will probably have a bunch of hot takes and circle jerks. I could be super wrong or maybe I'm stating the obvious, but I wanted to say something about it before the game is released on the new earlier date of September 12th, 2023. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I don't always get to make opinion videos like this, and it's interesting to see if what I'm saying is just pure insanity or if it resonates with a few of you. Regardless of whatever anyone says about this game, I'll be playing it on release, and odds are I'll be loving every minute of it based off my time with the demo. If you haven't already, at least check that out and maybe wish list the game.